Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Gardner. I'm the Assistant Chief of our Fireworks Program here at the State Fire Marshal's Office. Today we'll be presenting on the new Consumer Fireworks Discharge Law that just took place this year. A few of the topics we're going to be discussing are the new Ohio Fire Code Rule 5626 as it relates to consumer discharge. We'll cover some definitions, some general requirements including local regulations and laws, exhibition safety and compliance, possession, storage, handling of consumer fireworks, the discharge rules including the dates and times, restrictions, prohibited conduct, separation distances, incident reporting, some ORC regulations, frequently asked questions, and contact information and resources with the State Fire Marshal's Office. We're going to start off with a short video from the news regarding the new consumer discharge rules. It's 544 and as you wake up this morning, perhaps you're thinking about Memorial Day. While well, we're looking ahead to another major holiday, our state is relaxing its laws on fireworks for certain holidays starting in July, but depending on where you live, your local leaders might not be on board with these new rules. 10 TV's Tino Ramos joins us now live from downtown this morning. Tino. Yeah, Tracy, we can tell you the boom's going to be a lot louder this year, here in Ohio at least, when it comes to the 4th of July. And that's because a new state law is about to kick in here. And what it will allow you to do is to buy consumer-grade fireworks. You can actually set them off in Ohio for the first time. But you're right, there are some warnings that do come with this. Now, this has been in the works for some time, for years actually, that they've been uh, monitoring this. And starting July 1st, the state is allowing people to set things off like firecrackers, bottle rockets, Roman candles, and other items here in Ohio on private property, but not everyone is on board with this. You see the new law comes with exceptions where local municipalities can opt out. Now we've already seen this happen in communities like Upper Arlington and Columbus is drafting updated legislation that prohibits setting these fireworks off in city limits, but that doesn't mean everyone plays by the rules. Every year citizens are injured and properties damaged from fireworks. Uh, each year we have a handful of fires that have been caused by fireworks. Last year in particular, we had one fire that caused uh, over $200,000 in property damage. And firefighters say because these are more powerful fireworks that you'll now be able to set off, they say it's very important to follow those safety measures. Don't have the fireworks around kids. Uh, set them off in very open areas so it won't catch anything on fire. And of course, just make sure you have water around just in case of those emergencies. And a final note here, again, I can't stress this enough. Make sure you check your local municipality because they may not allow you to set these fireworks off. We'll have more coming up next hour. In downtown Columbus, Tino Ramos, 10 TV News. As the video said, some jurisdictions are allowed to ban the discharge of fireworks, and we're going to cover that more in detail as we go through the laws and rules. Now we're going to cover a few of the definitions and changes in the consumer laws. House Bill 172 of the 134th General Assembly requires the state fire marshal to adopt rules regulating the time, manner, and location of consumer-grade fireworks. The rules must permit adult consumers to safely and responsibly use consumer grade fireworks on their property or other property with the owner's permission. House Bill 172 also states that individuals can possess consumer grade fireworks, eliminating the requirement that they take them out of state within 48 hours of purchase and allows the person to discharge the fireworks on their property or neighbor's property with their consent. There's also permissible discharge dates for the 1.4G consumer discharge, which are going to be January 1st, Chinese New Year, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, the last Monday in May and the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding that day, June 19th, June 3rd, 4th and 5th, and the first Friday, Saturday and Sunday before and after July 4th. Labor Day and the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding, Diwali and New Year's Eve. We'll go into further detail the actual times permitted as there are exceptions for a few of those holidays. Uh, rules do pro include provisions requiring that all fireworks 
be used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions to provide for all the following. The use of aerial fireworks, separation distances between discharges, ignitions, or explosions in adjacent structures, railroads, airports, publicly owned property and controlled spaces, and places where hazardous materials are manufactured, used, and stored. And we will go into great detail for the discharge separation distances as we go on. Fireworks use on common and multi-tenant properties, dormitories, hazardous materials areas. We'll go into great detail on that shortly. Uh, the suspension of fireworks and discharges, ignitions, or explosions during times of drought or similar conditions. The proximity of fireworks, discharges, ignitions, or explosions to children and any other similar matter. This is the scope of the Rule 5626 of the Fire Code for the new consumer discharge, basically saying this paragraph applies to possession, storage, handling, and discharge use of 1.4G fireworks pursuant to sections 3743, 45, and 451 of the Revised Code. You'll hear 3743, 45, and 3743, 451 of the Revised Code mentioned several times throughout here. 3743.45 is your purchase, use, and regulations of consumer fireworks. And the 3743.451 is your rules for consumer grade fireworks. We're going to go over some definitions of what a 1.4G firework is a dis discharge site, fireworks discharge incident, discharge, a fireworks establishment, and what a spectator is. So 1.4G fireworks is defined in the fire code and the Ohio Revised Code. Basically, it's a consumer firework, has a UN uh, label of 0336. Uh, it's a consumer firework consistent with regulations of the United States Department of Transportation as expressed using the designation of a one point, Division 1.4G. So anything that's purchased, handled, stored, or possessed, used, or discharged by a consumer. Here are some examples of consumer type fireworks, all at the UN 0336, um, not inclu including not limited to bottle rockets, cakes, aerial shots, Roman candles, firecrackers. You'll notice all the bright display packaging. Uh, we'll go over in the later clip slide here of what a commercial shell looks like. Fireworks discharge site is just like it, just like it sounds. It's an area where 1.4G fireworks are discharged, including the point of discharge and the area immediately surrounding that point, so where they're actually lighting the firework off from. The consumer fireworks discharge incident, any act or omission that occurs at a location of a 1.4G firework are purchased, possessed, handled, stored, used, or discharged, and here's the key words, that results in injury or death or substantial risk of injury or death to any person that results in property damage in excess of $1,000 and involve either of the two following. Discharge, handle, and use, or the results of a discharge, handle, and use of other 1.4G fireworks or associated materials and the failure of any person to comply with the applicable requirement imposed by Chapter 3743 of the Ohio Revised Code in this section, and we'll get into more detail. This is a video here of a consumer retail, or I'm sorry, consumer discharge incident in Toledo, Ohio of last year. It's unbelievable to hear it and see it, isn't it? And as you see right there, a wild scene for those in an East Toledo neighborhood, a U-Haul loaded with fireworks goes up in flames and explodes while people were celebrating the holiday. Now, John Monk has been out in this neighborhood in East Toledo most of the day. And John, we understand you spoke with some of the neighbors who saw the whole thing take place, John. That's right, they were out here earlier today and actually before we came back this afternoon, the neighbors here on Berry Street cleaned up all of the firework debris, but there is still plenty of debris stacked up that you can see to let you know that this neighborhood for a while last night was in utter chaos. Just before 1030 Sunday night, a U-Haul rental truck filled with consumer fireworks went off. The resulting spray of flying fireworks ignited others that were already set up on the street. 
While many of the neighbors here ran for cover, some tried in vain to put the various fires out. That's how people got hurt because they was over there trying to throw water on it and fire was still going off. I seen one guy, he was pouring the, with the cooler, he was pouring water on it and it popped up and hit him in the side. He had no shirt on and I, he yelled and ran and it was crazy, man. Officially, three people were taken to the hospital with their injuries, but others probably went in on their own. Neighbors and fire officials both agree this incident is the perfect example of how too many fireworks in the hands of amateurs is a recipe for disaster. Somebody was more experienced of this, you know, because you can see right here, nobody had no experience in fireworks. This is a uh, an example of why fireworks should be held in uh, and taken care of by the professionals in a controlled environment as best as can. Now, this investigation is still open by Toledo police as many of the neighbors here reported to police that before those fireworks went off, they all saw a younger man, probably a teenager, toss an M80 into the back of that U-Haul that triggered this whole event. So we'll update you on that story as new information becomes available. But for now, reporting live in East Toledo, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11. Okay, so that would be a reportable incident of a 1.4 uh, G discharge. And there's one more video here I'd like to point out of another discharge accident. The next term we're going to define is discharge. It includes the use, explosion, detonation, ignition, or any other discharge or use of a 1.4G fireworks in any manner. And then a fireworks establishment is any fireworks manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, or storage premises subject to licensure under chapter 3743 of the Ohio Revised Code and this is going to be a video of a fire at an actual licensed facility that was not in Ohio. These, basically, these two gentlemen walk in to steal fireworks, so they try to set a distraction by lighting off some product in the aisleways. Here's just more uh, footage of it from the security system. This was in Harris County, Texas. Uh, they ended up getting away with $200 worth of merchandise for the damage they just caused. Um, it could have been a lot worse, obviously, if the product would have all went off. You'll see the bystanders come in and try to stomp it out before someone grabs 
a portable fire extinguisher and extinguishes it. And then our last term is going to be a spectator. It's any person other than a person who's directly engaged in the discharge of 1.4G fireworks. So if your neighbors are shooting off and other families, anyone watching the, the fireworks being discharged will be an, a, a spectator. Now we're going to cover, go into the Ohio Fire Code, uh, Rule 5626, and cover some of the general requirements. There is a QR code on the screen if you want to access that. That will take you to Ohio Fire Code Rule 5626. Uh, you can actually print it or download it directly off of our website. Uh, some of the things we'll be covering now are the local regulations, other laws and regulations, exhibitions, inducing panic, safety compliance, tampering, both with the product and with the scene, and liability. So the, the possession, storage, and handling and discharge of any 1.4G firework within our state has to be in accordance with the 3743-27, which is, deals with the Fountain Device Retail Operations, 3743.45, which is your purchaser use and regulations of consumer fireworks, and 3743.451, which is the rules of consumer grade fireworks. With lo regarding local regulations, the provisions of the paragraph are not construed in any way to limit the authority of a local governing body to restrict or ban the use of fireworks within their territorial jurisdiction. Basically with this new laws, we didn't want the communities not have any say in it. So they are allowed to uh, restrict or ban the use of fireworks in their jurisdiction. Um, any such duty, duly enacted law, rule, or regulation supersedes any less restrictive provisions set forth herein and controls within the territorial boundaries of that jurisdiction. Local regulation again, uh, again, they can restrict the dates, times, a person can discharge, ignite, or explode any 1.4G consumer fireworks. They can ban the discharge, ignition, or explosion of fireworks um, purchased. They can adopt a resolution uh, by township trustees um, and any prevailing or conflicting resolution adopted under that division of the Ohio Rise Code 3743.45, which is the purchaser use regulation of consumer fireworks. Um, by the Board of County Commissioners in the county within the, which the township is located. So they can go through their township trustees, city organizations, and ban the use of those. Um, the paragraph does not limit the enforcement of any ordinance, resolution, or statute that regulates noise, disturbance of the peace, or disorderly conduct. And for political subdivisions that have not opted out of uh, this rule, um, we encourage those political subdivisions to adopt the discharge rules directly in the law that will ensure each provision is uh, directly and clearly enforceable within their jurisdictions. Um, for jurisdictions that have banned the use of fireworks in their jurisdiction, Ohio F Revised Code 374365 is the law regarding fireworks, and it states that no person shall possess fireworks in this state or shall possess for sale or sell any firework in this state, except as a licensed manufacturer of fireworks, licensed wholesaler of fireworks, a shipping permit holder, or a licensed exhibitor of fireworks. And it goes on to all the revised code sections. I'll have a QR code later in the presentation where it'll take you directly to that section. Public exhibition. This is a popular one. 1.4 G fireworks discharged pursuant to and in accordance with sections 3743-27, Fountain Device Retailers, 3743-45, Purchasers Use Regulations of Consumer Grade Fireworks, and this paragraph shall not be considered a public exhibition subject to licensure and permit requirements as long as no 1.4G firework is used within the same display as a 1.3G firework. Towards the end of the presentation, I'll go into more detail of what's going to trigger a permit for an exhibition of 1.4G fireworks. 
Also, 1.4G fireworks shall not be possessed, stored, handled, or discharged in a licensed fireworks exhibition by anyone other than a licensed exhibitor. This means if you go out to a public show that's licensed and sponsored and they're shooting 1.3G off, you cannot bring your own consumer fireworks and discharge them during the exhibit. Inducing panic. Fireworks shall not be possessed, stored, handled, or discharged in any manner that would or would have a high likelihood of inducing panic. No person shall cause the evacuation of any public place or otherwise cause serious public inconvenience by alarm by doing any of the following. Initiating or circulating a report of warning of an alleged or impending fire impending fire, explosion, crime, or other catastrophe, knowing that such report or warning is false, threatening to commit an offense of violence, or committing any offense with reckless disregard of the likelihood that its commission will cause serious public inconvenience or alarm. Unless otherwise specified by the revised code or this code, all 1.4G fireworks shall be used and discharged in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions and recommended practices and in accordance with the most recent CPSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, guidelines available at the time of discharge. And that will go into when we get to tampering. Persons who obtain possession of any 1.4G fireworks shall not in any manner tamper with, dismantle, or alter the 1.4G firework other than normal discharge. That means if you have three or four sets of cakes, you are not to chain fuse them together. That is not how they're designed. If you go in somebody's house or residence and you see powders, fireworks cut open, uh, new fireworks being made, uh, that's tampering, and Chief Hobbs will go into more of that and the laws related to explosives manufacturing in his presentation. Our next video is going to be a lengthy one. It's uh, of a couple guys who have some 1.4G product in their garage and decide that they are going to make their own display show with it.
fired. Well, a man from Akron continues to heal after a massive fireworks explosion that cost the man one of his arms, his sight, and his hearing. Tonight, he's sharing his story of survival and the important lesson that he has learned. Fox 8's Melissa Reed is in Akron with a story. Scary. Uh, hmm. I don't know where I'm going to, you know, what what's going to come from this like life is drastically different for 34 year old Kevin Skubik of Akron having my kids you know you know taking care of your kids and now your kids are taking care of you and that's because Skubik's left forearm and hand is gone surgeons hope to save his right arm uh, my eyes my ears I can't hear a lot more surgeries are going to still happen. I'm just playing it day by day. And every day he spends in the burn unit at Akron Children's Hospital. Skubik thinks about July 1st. That's when he was carrying a bag of homemade fireworks outside a home on Grand Avenue when the fireworks suddenly exploded. Then I seen the explosion and my eye sealed shut. My, my ears are still ringing right now. I can't hear. But, uh kind of blown up on the ground. I seen my arm half off, seen blood coming out. Didn't really feel too much pain. The man who sold him the fireworks, 65-year-old Wayne Jones of Akron, was arrested and charged with manufacturing explosives. Skubik says he used to buy them every year. Always liked to play with fireworks. Just happened to be at a super bad day. You're using this to spread a message to people about fireworks. What is that? Fire is very scary, but explosion is is way more. Having something blow up on you and because you're out to have a good time. Fourth of July is supposed to be a time of celebrating. Don't play with anything. Just be with your loved ones. That's the best time you're going to have. In Akron, Melissa Reed, Fox 8 News. Next, we're going to talk about liability with consumer fireworks. Any person who possesses, stores, handles, or discharges any 1.4G firework, or any person who's responsible for such possession, storage, handling, or discharge shall be liable in accordance with all applicable laws, rules, and regulations, and subject to any immunities and defense thereto in Ohio law for any injury, death, or property damage resulting therefrom. So the public who are discharging these fireworks, they cause property damage or injury, cause death, they are held liable and can be charged either civilly or criminally. Now we're going to cover some possession, storage, and handling, pretty much the meats and potatoes of the discharge rule. Possession, storage, and handling. So any person who intends to obtain possession in this state of 1.4G fireworks shall obtain possession of the firework only from a licensed retailer, licensed manufacturer, or licensed wholesale, wholesaler and are subject to sections of 3743.45, the purchase, use, and regulations of consumer fireworks of the revised code. In addition to compliance with applicable provisions of the revised code in this code, all 1.4G fireworks shall be possessed only in accordance with chapter 3743 of the Ohio Revised Code, handled carefully and with due consideration of the explosive nature of fireworks, stored in compliance with all applicable provisions of this code and not in a manner that endangers the public at large, stored in amounts not greater than 125 pounds net pyrotechnic composition with any structure, building, or vehicle, stored at least 150 feet from other explosives, explosive material or hazardous materials, and stored in a cool, dry place away from ignition sources, including but not limited to heat, shock, friction, and sparks, and at least 25 feet away from hot work activity, open flames, flammable and combustible liquids, including gasoline, diesel, kerosene, to name a few. The exception to the storage and quantity limits of over 125 pounds net weight, um, they could, you can apply for, and the separation of distances can be increased if those product is properly permitted in an explosive storage magazine. Fireworks locations, 
Fireworks shall not be stored in sleeping areas within the means of egress in any mechanical or service area or any occupancy group or residential location or outside in open areas unless the 1.4G fireworks are properly permitted, which would require the permit for the explosive magazine. This picture here is a residence, I believe up in Summit County, where they had product stored from floor to ceiling throughout the house in sleeping areas and hallways. 1.4G fireworks shall not be stored in any Group I occupancy within any residential facility licensed under Title 37 of the Revised Code, and we'll go into those in greater detail. This discharge of 1.4G consumer fireworks, including the site, trajectory, fallout, and separation, spectator separations, shall comply with Chapters 37 43 of the Revised Code. And then your dates of discharge, as we covered before, that unless it's one of those designated dates, they are not to be permitted to be discharged in Ohio. And those dates, again, are the first day of January, January 1st, Chinese New Year Day, uh, May 5th, last Monday in May, and the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding that day, June 19th, July 3rd, 4th and 5th, and the first Friday, Saturday and Sunday before and after July 4th, Labor Day, and the Saturday and Sunday immediately preceding, Diwali and the 31st day of December. Time frames. So discharge for fireworks can only happen on those designated dates between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. with two exceptions. On the 31st day of December, you can discharge fireworks up until 11.59 p.m. at night. And on the first day of January, you can discharge them between 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. as well. Some unsafe conditions, droughts, or any hazardous conditions, uh, they, the work should be either postponed or discontinued until the hazard can be resolved. Um, high winds, precipitation, atmospheric conditions, if there's any hazardous debris falling on any of the spectators. Uh, if there's a burn ban, uh, fire weather watch, or red flag warning, the use of fireworks are not permitted, even if it follows on one of those selected dates. Now we got a now we got a fire going. Oh man. Dang it. Oh, that's not good. Don't jump on this. Oh crap. Weather protection, fireworks, and pyrotechnic material used in discharge shall be protected from adverse weather conditions. So if it's lightning, raining, you don't want to get your product wet, it's better just to postpone until you can discharge them safely. Clean up. 
Any person who discharges 1.4G consumer fireworks shall conduct a inspection to locate debris resulting, resulting from the fallout from the fireworks. Uh, such inspection and cleanup shall occur immediately after the discharge or within 12 hours of the discharge if the discharge occurs at night. You're locating any debris that might still be burning, um, cause a hazard, and then you need to clean up and remove the debris and not leave it out. Some more prohibited conduct. The indoor discharge of 1.4G fireworks, obviously. The presence of tents. There cannot be any tents within your discharge area. Those are usually not flame treated and they can cause an issue. Um, and the storage of fireworks within the discharge site in a manner that would accidental ignition could occur or has a likelihood of occurring. So if you're shooting off fireworks and you have your whole stash right next to where you're discharging, that is not a good idea. All right, so it's, cold. it's really cold and we decided to shoot fireworks, but what's New Year's Eve? Yeah, so we're gonna do it inside in this lovely house that we have. You've seen a video of this house before if you've watched any of our videos. A lot of people complain about that video. Yeah, fuck y'all. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> we found treasure in this house. Yeah. So now we're gonna take these things that he has, hold them all lovely like a lovely assistant. It's cold. So, we're gonna set off a mortar inside the house. So we're gonna show you the house real quick. We're just gonna put it like right there and shoot it off up there and see Let's what aim happens. for the hole. Let's aim, aim for the, the hole. Light socket. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna aim for the light socket. We'll aim for that. I don't have my knife. What do you think is gonna happen? The window's gonna blow out? We don't know. Light it. Alright, do it. Light it. Oh, it's so fast. That was insane. Huh? That was insane. Did it break? There the wasn't house? a second explosion though. Do it again. Hold on, I'm scared. Hurry up, do it again. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> did it, did it? Oh, fuck yeah. It broke some glass in me. <laughs> it did it the roof, look at that. <laughs> the thing went off with some force. Okay. It zooms really, really slow. That was real loud. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm not do it yet. Right? So far, it's not off to a good start. Yo, we didn't ready? know it was going to go that loud. Not yet, but. Wait, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? We're on fire. And he's broke. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> Fell so hard. 250 pounds falls really hard. I think that was pretty I think that was pretty cool. Oh. Here we go again. We lost the footage of the other one. Oh shit. That was the biggest one. Oh my god, that was louder than I thought. Things are on fire. It's so smoky. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's get out of here before we die. Oh god. Right, I'm cold. I'm cold. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, like, comment, subscribe. Fire. And uh, we'll see you next time. Happy, uh, no. happy New Year's. The pointing, aiming, or discharging of 1.4G fireworks at or towards any person, object, including bystanders, spectators, emergency services personnel, vehicles, aircraft, watercraft, or any structure. Uh, discharge of 1.4G fireworks not in accordance with the revised code sections pertaining to consumer discharge. And also the discharge of fireworks within the boundaries of any federal or state or local forest, park, Recreation area, places of nature, conservancy.
this one here, animals. The discharge of 1.4 G fireworks in a manner that would deem, be deemed hazardous to property or endanger a person or animal is prohibitive. The discharge of 1.4 G fireworks within 150 feet of a property that houses livestock measured from the point of discharge to the nearest point of the property line. The person wanting to discharge the consumer fireworks needs to contact the property owner at least five days with written notice of the owner to advise them of their intent. Also, the discharge of 1.4 G fireworks on public property or private school property is prohibited. The ignition or discharge of fireworks on any street, highway, alley, or public way. So again, you have to discharge them on your property or the property of another with their permission, not in the street. Do not discharge fireworks within the presence of smoking materials, matches, lighters, or open flame devices within 50 feet. The exception would be your matches or lighters, open flames that you're going to be using to actually light your firework. Now we're going to get to the spectator distances of different types of occupancies and when they double, triple, quadruple. Uh, firework discharge sites shall remain clear of ignitable materials or any other hazards and shall be separated from spectators, structures, and other hazards. When determining the separation distances, any conflict of ambiguity, ambiguity shall be resolved in a manner that provides the greatest degree of public safety and property protection. Minimum separation distance to any person is going to be 150 feet for your aerial devices, um, such as Roman candles, your shells, cakes, bottle rockets, any ground device that does not actually leave the ground uh, leaves a report. Um, minimum required discharge radius is going to be 50 feet. The separation distance for a 1.4 G firework to any structure from the point of discharge, minimum is 150 feet from the structure. Next, we'll go into increased separation distances for your multi-tenants, military establishments, railroads, special hazards, uh, hospitals, bulk storage areas. So your multi-tenant properties, your apartments, uh, hotels, motels, dormitories, fraternities, sororities, the distance actually uh, increases to three times the amount of the 150 feet normal. So for your aerial devices, you're going to increase that to 150 feet from point of discharge. For your aerial and your ground items, are going to be 150 feet. Hospitals, educational facilities, so schools, health care facilities, institutional groups, and residential care facilities, uh, anything regulated under Title 37 of the Revised Code, uh, the, your separation distance is going to be double the amount. So you're going to have 350 feet from point of discharge to the nearest structure and 100 feet for ground items. For your military installations, railroads, airports, other firework establishments, your separation distance is three times. So 450 feet for aerial, 150 feet for ground items from your point of discharge. Your bulk storage area is uh, going to be double the distance. Um, it does say that the fuel tanks on vehicles, so like your neighborhood, any motorized equipment, it's not considered bulk storage. Then aerial shells. An area selected for the discharge of your 1.4G fireworks site um, for air shells shall be located so the post ignition trajectory of the shells does not come within 25 feet of any overhead object, structure, or vehicle. Why that's important is the firework goes up too close, hits a power line, a tree, it explode or it can come down and explode down the ground. So you need to make sure you have your distance in the air. Um, the fallout area uh, for firework shells should be an open area. Spectators, unauthorized vehicles, watercraft, and readily combustible materials, anything that can burn, shall not be located within the fallout area of your aerial shell. The consumer fireworks discharge incident, we'll touch on that a little bit. Chief Hobbs will discuss more in his presentation but any consumer fireworks discharge incident shall be reported to the fire code official and law enforcement official immediately. That's your local jurisdiction. What happens, they need, to locate, they need to contact the local fire and police immediately. And we'll go into reporting for fire departments what to, and law enforcement how to report that to us. Again, we cover this, anything that results in injury, death, substantial risk of injury or death or causes over $1,000 in discharge, handling, use, or which is a violation of the Ohio Revised Code is considered a discharge incident.
Once an incident has occurred and the fire department and police uh, make contact, the, they have 72 hours to report it to the fire code, of, to the state fire marshal's office. Uh, the report shall provide the time, date, and location of the incident, um, the name, address, telephone number of all the following is applicable, the person who's conducting the show, the discharge, any persons who discharged the fireworks that result in any injury or death, the owner of the property where the discharge occurred, the owner of the property where the injury or damage occurred, so if it's not on your property and you have your, your neighbor's written permission to do it, you need to put their address on there, any persons fatally injured or as a result of discharge, any other person present during the discharge, so any witnesses, anyone who was there to saw anything, uh, you have 72 hours to make that report available to the state fire marshal's office. Tampering, this is going to be more with your uh, consumer fireworks incident. Just like with your commercial fireworks shows, uh, the, the disturbance, dismantling, repositioning, moving, or altering any firework item or any associated equipment or other material or other items within the 1.4G fireworks discharge site or any other evidence related to the consumer firework discharge site incident is prohibited, meaning you cannot disable, dismantle a scene if it's a 1.4 product, the people cannot take it and move it before an investigation has either been determined that we're going to come out and take a look at it, unless authorized by a fire official or law enforcement official on the site to prevent further injury or death, uh, something's still light, lit off and it's aimed at more people, they can obviously take uh, action to rectify that before we come out. Next is going to be our ORC-based um, Discharge regulations, you'll see all these are either going to be misdemeanors or minor misdemeanors, but it is an avenue that local law enforcement can take. Again, Chief Hobbs will go over some more of the uh, ORC requirements. Acquisition, the public can only obtain 1.4G fireworks for use in Ohio from a state fire marshal licensed manufacturer or wholesaler. They must be 18 years of age or older. Uh, there's a violation of the revised code 3743-63A and 65B. Uh, the penalty effective date obviously went into effect this year. Uh, it's a first degree misdemeanor, up to six months in jail, $1,000 fine. Possession, only the public can only possess fireworks in Ohio that were obtained from a state fire marshal license manufacturer. Again, just a misdemeanor. Distribution. An unlicensed purchaser, the general public, cannot sell or give fireworks to anyone in Ohio, um, meaning you can't buy a bunch of fireworks, have some extra, and decide you're going to give them to your neighbor or sell them to your neighbor. They have to be purchased from a wholesaler or manufacturer. Discharge dates, um, for those dates that aren't listed, if you discharge on any of those other dates, it is a misdemeanor. However, they could use for communities that have banned fireworks can use the revised code section that deals with possession, storage, and handling. Locations, again, you only discharge them on your property or another property with permission. Again, it's another misdemeanor if you would discharge them somewhere other than permitted. Dates, we're not going through those again, but those are the dates you can discharge consumer fireworks on in the state of Ohio. Penalties, first degree misdemeanor. On unauthorized property, so you go to your neighbor's house without their permission, uh, go to schools, shoot them off, that's a minor misdemeanor with a maximum fine of up to $100. Under the influence, negligently discharging fireworks while intoxicated or in the possession or control or under the influence of any intoxicating liquor, beer, or controlled substance is a first degree misdemeanor. So law enforcement gets called out and someone's discharging fireworks and they have a beer in their hand and they've been consuming that, they can be charged. Ashley, when you see this video I have right here, you can only ask yourself, what in the world was this guy thinking? It shows a man holding a firework in his hand and then waiting for it to go off. Let me give you a close up look of this video right here. Seeing this moment, it just makes you cringe. It's a 35 year old man, we're told, holding a beer in one hand, a firework that's meant to be set on the ground in his other hand. The Polk County Sheriff's Office says the man badly injured his hand and chest, and he is lucky to be alive today. They shared the video saying drinking plus holding a mortar tube equals quote, bad idea. 
confiscation authority. Um, certified fire inspector has probable cause uh, to believe that fireworks are being manufactured, sold, or possessed, or transported in violation of the revised code. The uh, fire safety inspector can seize the fireworks. Um, it does not affect the authority of a peace officer to make arrests for violations of this code, which is the revised code, uh, or to make seizures. Um, of fireworks are manufactured, sold, possessed, transported, or used in violation of this chapter. And there's the revised code sections. And enforcement of the new fireworks consumer law with a fire marshal citation. Uh, Ohio Fire Code Rule 5626 has several provisions and additional safety requirements. Uh, revised Code 3737.42 through 51 talks about citation and the penalties. So a lot of information is useful if you're going to go through the route of writing a citation for violating the consumer fireworks law. To report an incident of a consumer fireworks incident to the state fire marshal's office, Monday through Friday, contact Fire Explosion Investigations Bureau main office. There's a number there. After hours, there's a 24-7 number you can call. And then our office, the Code Enforcement Bureau, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. also. If you do need one of the inspectors from code enforcement, uh, FEIB will make the determination if they're going to send out an investigator or an inspector, and they will contact us. Some frequently asked questions that we get phone calls on weekly. Are there any rain dates, rain delay dates for consumer fireworks? At this time, there are not. Um, unlike your professional shows where you meet with your exhibitor, you have designated rain dates where you might make, have a makeup that's permitted. Uh, the consumer fireworks can only be discharged on those designated dates. Another one we get a lot. My neighbor shoots off fireworks on days that aren't approved at all hours of the night. Who do I contact to get them to stop or can you come out and tell them to stop? So with the consumer fireworks law, the local AHJ should be contacted for enforcement. If the law enforcement agency and the fire department does not act on compliance on the complaint, Try reaching out to your elected officials and let them know if you believe that 1.3G fireworks, which we'll cover later, are being discharged, manufactured, sold, uh, please contact our office and your law enforcement agency. Does Ohio have any kind of certification or licensure to become a private exhibitor to set off 1.4G consumer fireworks on someone else's property for profit? The answer is no. The intent of the new fireworks law is to allow consumers to discharge the fireworks on their own property or their neighbor's property with permission on those designated dates. Uh, discharge 1.4 is still um, cannot do it on federal, state, local forest, park, recreation area, place of nature, conservancy, public property, or private school property. If you are inviting the public in or advertising a show with 1.4G, or if it's not within accordance of revised code section, then yes, then it becomes a public exhibition. You have to have a licensed exhibitor and get a permit and have uh, site inspections conducted. But if it's just you shooting fireworks on your own property, that's not an exhibition. Where can I buy fireworks? Again, as we discussed, um, the consumer fireworks can be purchased through um, licensed wholesaler, retailer. Um, when you do buy them, you are provided either a nominal fee or free safety glasses and a safety pamphlet when you purchase your 1.4G fireworks. Some additional resources and contact information from our office. This QR code here takes you to Ohio Fire Code 5626. It um, talks about discharge rules, frequently asked questions, your applications, forms, guides, and resources. That's our website there to take you to that page. Fireworks applications and forms. So 1.4, 1.3, flame effects, any type of form, it's going to be on there under this QR code on our website. We have advisory statements as well on there. The Ohio Revised Code, so section 3743, which we talked a lot about. There was a lot in there regarding fireworks, uh, consumer and uh, commercial. So that, that code there will take you right to that chapter. Our contact information again for code enforcement, also testing and registration is up there. FEIB's contact information.
And then this QR code here will take you to our contact page on the website, State Fire Marshal's website. This will get you in contact with all the bureaus that we have with our phone number, email, contact. So if you scan that QR code, it'll get you to whatever bureau you need to get a hold of. All right, any questions? All right, thank you.